Okay, something cool happened just yesterday. Uh, nested virtualization is uh, now available on the Mac uh, with the M3 chip. Uh, you, you might have uh, a later model. Uh, until yesterday, this was literally not possible. Uh, so there is a sl slight workaround. I am running here Fedora 41 in the UTM. Instead of VirtualBox, I'm using now UTM. And on this Fedora 41, I'm running another virtual machine, which is now a nested virtual machine, and that's Fedora CoreOS. So if you want to know, want to know how to do that, if, uh, watch this video till the end. I will take you through the process uh, for the MacBook with the M3 chip. So first things first, uh, this is already working environment. Let me shut it down. I will create a new virtual machine. So first, let's start with a UTM installation. Uh, in order to do that, you need to install UTM version 4.6, which is currently in beta. Uh, so to download the UTM 4.6, we have to go to releases. Uh, and in the releases tab, uh, uh, hit the this button here. Now we get the V4.6. And in the V4.6, we have to scroll down to assets. And we need to open the assets. And in here, you will have the UTM DMG file, which you now download and allow it to complete. Okay, so this is now downloaded. We have the UTM, simply drag it to applications. I already have that, so I'm not going to do it. Once this is uh, installed, we go to the UTM. This will be empty, blank. So what we're going to do, we're going to add a new virtual machine. What, um, in order to achieve what we discussed earlier on, we will install an operating system. Here it will be Linux, and we will, act, uh, we will uh, select the Use Apple Virtualization um, with the particular boot ISO image. Now, I have here the Fedora KDE live arch 64 iso you can download it from the link uh, in the description of the video once i selected the kde live i simply hit continue and here i like to give it a little bit more ram so which is eight gig and minimum four which is that so let's say added six cores uh, to the virtual machines and also it's probably good to have some space in order to run another nested VMs on the system. So I'm adding in 35 gigabytes of space and not needing any directory. So this can be F41.2, uh, which is a second virtual machine. And we can open the VM settings after this. As you can see, we have now the settings for the virtual machine that we're configuring. Uh, CPU cores are the same. The RAM is the one that we selected. It, the workaround here, which we need to select, is basically just to choose bootloader and select first Linux. Now select any random file. So I, I just, you know, I select something uh, and now I go back and change it back to UEFI. Once this is done, this will allow for the dev KD, uh, KVM, I, I, I think, to, to be created. Unfortunately, the, you know, this is, it's a beta, so this is the way it, it has to be done. So once we change the bootloader to the Linux, choose a random file, and then choose the back to the UFI, we hit save. And right now, we have the F41 Linux uh, here, which we can start. What, I, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to install the KDE straight away. So as you can see, this is the second virtual machine I have now. And we go through all of the steps on this Fedora installation. So, okay, welcome to Fedora Linux. Install to hard drive, launch an installer. I choose United Kingdom. Continue installation destination. Now click this button here, root installation, enable root account. I like to allow SSH login, uh, type in our password. And now we have to hit this button twice 
in order to verify that you want to use the weak password, Fedora installer uses the system of double click in case something is incorrect. Passwords do not match. Okay. Yeah, so as you can see, there's a warning that the password is weak. So again, hit the done button twice. And we will go also with the user creation. I like to say Adamski and password and user. And again, uh, done twice because it's a weak password. So once everything is done, we just begin the installation. <coughs> Once the system is installed, we're going to have to install uh, basically three packages. One of them is Git, uh, one of them is uh, Podman. I think Podman is coming installed in 41, but I'm just going to try to install it. Okay, installation is now complete. We can shut down the system. the window and now we go to the external drive where the, our live ISO is uh, present and we clear that so we don't have that hooked to our system anymore now we run the virtual machine once again and we follow the startup let me go to the full screen mode here Full screen, so see user creation. Um, I thought I had that selected before, but done. Yeah. Finish configuration, and we now can log into our new virtual machine on the Mac. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see. Still running the same uh, M3 Mac, 16 gigs of RAM, and in here we have a virtual machine setup. Let me change this, the resolution to the of the screen slightly because this looks to me like a little small. Apply. Okay. And now we are gonna go to console. I like to add it straight away to. Um, manager right. so now we go to let's see if we have VI which we should have yep so we go sudo let me clear this sudo dnf install and we go git potman uh bim uh, like a cell doesn't matter for the purpose of this video uh, and we just go Y, type in password and now installing this dependencies or these packages and I should have should have run the update first but okay so the DNF wait a little bit for the for the update to complete in the meantime as this is downloading we can go we can go to core OS assembler mm -hmm. docs and move on straight away to this particular window uh, where we need to copy this COSA alias or COSA command which will basically run uh, CoreOS assembler for us 
in order to create the uh, Fedora Core OS uh, virtual machine on this on this uh, Fedora 41 virtual machine. So this will be the nested the nested VM. It is good build, good few updates I see. <coughs> Let's wait until this completes. So Vim, let's do it this way. Let's edit the bash RC file now. If this is what you're using. Uh, and here we can simply go to the very end. Uh, and we can just type, paste in here the COSA alias. So now, as you can see, uh, if I go here, uh, you can see I now have the COSA alias and the original bashrc file. This will allow me to run the COSA commands. So I'm just going to save that. Cut. Let's cut this out. Yeah, we have that there. Set up source for this bash C file. So this is now being used. And if I now go to Cosa shell, I should be able to run Cosa shell. So this automatically uh, downloads the latest version of the chorus assembler, which is then required to build the Cosa image. Let's allow this to fully complete. As you can see, we are already basically running a virtual machine here since the device is dev KVM and this this not this did not end it up uh, with an error. So we are already successful, but let's go until the end of the process. So before we would have now this command to complain because the dev KVM is not accessible or not available. Um, as you can see now, that's not the case anymore. So now we updated our bash RC file, implemented the, we uh, and, and inserted the COSA, uh, COSA alias here as per the documentation, bash alias to run COSA. And the next thing we need to do, we just need to create our, some directories and run the builder. Okay, so we are now in Chorus Assembler. Let's exit that. Make here work. So here we can okay. So we are here in Adamski, and now we have the folder work, uh, directory work. So we go to work, F course. And then, as you can see right now, this is completely empty. So what, what we need to do uh, in order to start building Fedora Core OS, we need to run the COSA init command, which is just here, COSA init, Fedora Core OS config. This will basically create a, a set of directories which are required to Built in Fedora Core OS. Okay, so if I go LSLA now, we can see we have builds, cage, overrides, SRC, and TMP. So now that we have this ready uh, and the calls are uh, and COSA is available, we can now go COSA fetch. And we can go COSA build. This will basically fetch the packages and build the Fedora Core OS. Right. 
and later stable version. Now this will take about five five minutes, so we might uh, I might speed this up as well. After this uh, process is complete, we're gonna have a fresh build of Fedora Core OS ready in the builds directory, which I'm gonna show at the end of the process. Cool. And now we are complete. So if I go and list the builds, we can now see that we have Fedora Core OS 41 uh, available in our directory. So what I need to do now to run the Core OS, I just go Cosa Run, and this will run the nested VM inside of this VM. Uh, and as you can see, I'm still running this on the Fedora Core OS. Uh, sorry, under Fedora uh, 41, uh, and here on the left, I will have the F41. Um, let me see. So if I uh, cut its US release, you can see that's running F41 uh, with the Oh. With six eleven four three oh one kernel. Sequoia 5.1. Yay, and on the right we have Fedora CoreOS 41, 13 of November, which is the latest the today's build, um, running on the as a nested VM uh, on the Mac with M3 chip. And so if, if uh, just to show you the kernel version is different uh, as you can see to towards the F41 here on the left which is KDE Plasma that it's running on so we are literally having a nested VM available for the Mac M3 which is super exciting um, cool I hope that helps um, we might do some custom build of Fedora Core OS in the future in the very near future as well hope this helps uh, see you guys soon